He's got almost no pulse. Shu puts the back of his hand against Natsume's forehead, his icy cold to the touch. What, what should we do, Masaharu? Go get to school nurse, I'll stay here with him. Right. Run as quickly as you can. Obviously there's no blood, otherwise we would have seen that by now. Shu turns on his heel and runs out of the classroom. Natsume, please be okay. Chapter 5. It just ends like that. Did I skip past something? It generally just fades to black, right? Oh, shit. He died? Or was he just ill? Okay, he's not deaded. <sighs> Natsume is rushed to the hospital at the urging of the school nurse. Multiple doctors examine him, but none can offer an explanation for his condition. He's in a comatose state, but there is no clear indicator as to why. His brain activity is typical for someone who is asleep, and we found no trace of chemicals or abnormal hormone levels in his bloodstream. Perhaps he is simply very t Okay, I'm gonna go with it's not that he's just really tired. This comes as a comfort to the Mamma Mia parents, but Chu can't forget how cold his brother was, how he almost had no pulse. The whole situation feels dark and sinister. He has no reason to believe otherwise, but Chu feels his brother might not wake up. I'd say you're probably right. Three days passed. After three days go by, everyone becomes increasingly nervous. Natsume has not opened his eyes a single time. Chiaki sighs upon seeing Shu sitting opposite Natsume's hospital bed once again. You're just going to make yourself sick if you're here all the time. Haven't you heard of nosocomical infections? No, I don't know what that is. I'm not here all the time. Massa and I take turns. That's great and all, but when you guys are here, you stay for hours. What if, what if he wakes up when I'm not around? What if he needs something and nobody's here? There's doctors here, there's nurses, other staff. But Chiaki, seriously, you need to get, you need to rest. Go home. Shu's mind wanders back to his childhood. He and Fuyuko were often outside and prone to catching whatever bug was going around the neighborhood. Each time they lay sick in bed, it was Natsume who took care of them while their parents were busy with work. I never thought of back then for a while. When I think about how much of his time Natsume gave us, how he ignored the things he wanted. I can't leave him here alone. It was all he and Masahori could do not to stay with their brother all together all the time, even though taking turns had been at the assistance of their parents. I'll stay with Natsume, I'll be the one to take care of him. It's okay, Chiaki, really, I want to stay here, I don't want Natsume to be alone. With Chiaki, when Chiaki sees the resolution in Shu's eyes, he can't bring himself to protest anymore. The two of them sit together quietly until visitor hours end and Chiaki leaves. Man. This is horrible. I don't want Natsume to die. When Shu isn't at the hospital, his consciousness drifts in and out of school like a ghost too tied to another place to move. Shu counts the hours of his life in the slow movements of the hands of the clock looming above the teacher's head on the wall. Lately, I've been having really bad headaches. I keep getting new memories after saving Yukinari, which is normal, but I never heard this much before. Maybe it just gets worse every time. Just a thought. All right, hang on. In that little quadrant, we're going to look for Natsume. No, all of those had blood, so chances are it's not there. Ugh. Shu pushes his face into the palm of his hands and clenches his eyes shut, willing the pain in his head to go away. However, closing his eyes only makes the images more vivid. It's unbearable. He settles on staring at a fixed spot on the wall. I'm here, Shu. It's, it's going to be okay. Who was that? The more he tries to focus on that memory, the more garbled and farther away the voice sounds, he begins to wonder if he imagined those words. Probably not. During the lunch break, he swallows the aspirin he's been carrying around in his pocket and washes it down with water while trying not to think about the already altered past. It hurts. On the days that Masahari volunteers to go to the hospital to watch over their little brother, Shu is left in the dorms to wallow in his uncertainty. This day is no different. His temple still aching, Shu curls up in bed underneath the blanket. 
These headaches definitely have to be because of time travel. Medicine isn't doing anything. Just then, a particularly powerful twinge of pain jolts through Shu's skull. He flinches and closes his eyes reflexively. There's some weird shit afoot here. In the moment his eyes close, his memories become crystal clear. Is there some sort of weird paradox where all of this is going to come true or something? Shu dropped to his knees, stunned. At first, the image didn't quite register in his mind. It was just a random collection of shapes and unrecognisable figure. There's no way that's him. I just, I just saw him. He was fine just a couple of minutes ago. It can't be. The dead body and his brother were two separate, irreconcilable things in his mind. There was so much to take in that he didn't know where to look. No. Just when he started to feel it was all a bit too much, Hugh felt himself jerked backwards as someone tightly wrapped their arm around his body. Another arm covered his eyes, but far too late. Who? Even in darkness, the horrific image burned into his mind in such a way that Hugh doesn't think he'll ever be able to forget it. Confused and terrified, he clawed at the arms that wrapped around him. Let go of me! I'm here, Shu. It's, it's going to be okay. The voice sounded vaguely familiar and yet completely alien at the same time. It wasn't the least bit comforting or persuasive. Natsume. That's my initial thought. How can it possibly be? So it was Natsume. It was Natsume. Shu sits up straight, the blanket slides from his head and his field visu vision brightens. He was there, he was always there. That woman, do you think she looks like someone who would really... Shu chokes on the rest of his sentence, Natsume is silent for what seems like an eternity, but when he finally responds, it seems he understood in full what Shu meant to say. If you ask me, I don't know why someone would work so hard for so many years to meet her son would just crumble like that and kill him. I'm telling you, man, I, I said he knows more shit than he leads on. Police? Atsume, did you commit a crime? No way. And then he suddenly slammed us against the wall. Yeah. That was a bit weird. To say the least. Why didn't Atsume say anything to me? What was he doing? How was he always in the right place at the right time? Other... Uh, okay, look. Either foul play or he's just like this because of how depressed he is? How likely is that? Like, that he's just completely burnt out because he's had to see exactly the same things that we have, but we know that we can save it and he doesn't, but then... There were those moments where he seemed to just look straight at us as if he knew we were there but didn't want to say anything. Man, oh, there's too much going on. <laughs> he remembers Kisuke talking about working with the Natsume of the future, but he hadn't been very forthcoming with details. But if Kisuke was going to talk to Natsume, he would have told me, right? I mean, if there's a serial killer on the loose, it'd be good if we could, I don't know, work together? Shu opens his watch out of habit, his gaze flicking over to the messages section. Still no contact from Kisuke. He closes the watch and lies back down on the bed. I feel like I'm on the verge of understanding something, but... It's no good. This is just a huge mess with Natsume in a coma. I can't exactly ask him about any of this, but I trust him. Natsume always does what he thinks is best for me and Masaharu. There's a good reason for all of this. I just know it. Okay, so I've thrown out a lot of theories at this point, but... Maybe there is no Natsume in the future. Maybe it's only Kisuke because... Maybe all of that was supposed to happen. Maybe the sister was supposed to die. Maybe Masaharu was supposed to die. Maybe Yukanari was supposed to die. But without that, Natsume wouldn't die naturally. Like, all those deaths were natural. And were going to happen until we stopped them. But... Because of it, Natsume struck? No, because the future was changed. That only works in a world where everyone still died. <laughs> like, man. I have no idea. I have no idea. Shu clenches his fist in resolution. There's 
there's too many things to think of. It could be a whole bunch of shit. Don't worry, Natsume. This time, I'm the one who's here for you. It's going to be okay. I say that hesitantly, mate. Weird music to be playing with your mum there, isn't it? Mummy? What is it, you? You named us after all the seasons, right? Yeah, we've seen this. Why did you name us like that? Yeah, there were four warriors who fought to shape the world. Winter and autumn for the moon, and spring and summer fought for the sun. Why did they have to fight? Well, shoo, nobody could agree on how the world should look. Yeah, we've done this. Winter liked darkness very much. It was what she used to. She especially could not be with summer. So is there some sort of link? So... God, this would help if I spoke Japanese. <laughs> Your season of Masaharu's. Okay, so yeah, that would have to make sense. So... So, Natsume and Fuyuka's seasons were summer and winter, and we were autumn and spring. And I think we were autumn, because I joked about how miserable that was. But if Winter wanted to fight for the moon, then Autumn had to stay on her side, right? If Fuyuka wants me to do something, aren't I supposed to listen? You can't always do what people tell you to do, Shu. See for yourself what's right and do what your heart tells you to. Okay, so that's the message we were looking to get through here. Listen to my heart. Natsume, Masaharu. Shu falls into the water, his limbs heavy like lead. The light above the surface of the river is dimming. The water level is rising, covering Shu, covering everything. Fuyuka? Shoo. Man. Don't. Don't do what I think you're going to do. <laughs> I won't say, but don't. <laughs> don't do what I think you're going to do. Shoo's eyelids snap open. When did I fall asleep? I hate seeing these creepy dreams. Weren't we in our bed? Oh, several days past you. Yeah, okay. He lifts his chin, his neck stiff after falling asleep while sitting up. How long was I out? His eyes take a moment to adjust to the dim lighting. He glances at his watch and realises he was asleep for almost two hours. The room feels cold for the usual chill of twilight. The atmosphere is heavy and oppressive. Why is it so quiet? She can barely hear the blips and beeps from the bedside monitor. It's then that he sees her. Right. Shu is instantly on alert. There's something unsettling about this girl, something that isn't right. It might be her futuristic clothing? Just a thought. But what are you doing here? Even saying that much is difficult to Shu. It feels like there is a weight being pressed upon his chest, keeping him from moving as much as he would wish. The girl takes a step forward towards Natsume's hospital bed. I failed. The girl's voice sounds like broken glass somehow cacophonic and wrong. Shu's breath catches in his throat. She takes another step towards Natsume, her body turning away from Shu as she does so, but Shu cannot hear the sound of her footsteps, though the room is deathly quiet. No, she shouldn't be here. She shouldn't touch Natsume. Shu strongly resists the oppressive atmosphere and stands up, but before he has a chance to rush forward, the girl speaks again. I couldn't bring Natsume back. If he isn't dead, Shu wouldn't try to save him. What? What are you talking about? We have to save him! She turns her head and their eyes meet. In the dim light, he can hardly be 100% sure, but a sense of recognition is stirring. You are... Just then, the lights in the room automatically come on as they've done each night. Shu can see the girl by the light, and he finds himself staring into a pair of red eyes framed by a face that look all too familiar to his own. Though he's never seen this girl before, he immediately knows who it is, even if her eye colour is all wrong. Horror and simultaneously a strange feeling of relief flood his system. Fuyuka! Recognition dawns on the now grown-up Fuyuka's face as well. Shu? Why? And how? But what? As he tries to ask a million questions at once, Shu stutters and stumbles. He cannot muster up his usual eloquent flair. He cannot get his words out. Look. Her skin is deathly pale, and she has red fucking eyes. Whoever this is, chances are it's not the one you used to know. Or revived in the... 
God knows. His heart sinking, Shu shoves all of his immediate questions into the back of his mind. He clenches his fist at his side and lashes out. What do you mean, if he isn't dead? What are you doing to him? Shu. Fuyuka turns away from the hospital bed and begins taking slow, laboured steps towards Shu. You're here, you're here. He said that I would have to wait to meet you. I've been so very patient, but here you are. Uh, answer me! But his sister does not hear him. She's looking right through me. What do I do? Why is she here? What does she want? Come with me. We aren't supposed to be here. I'm so lonely, so tired. She reaches towards him. Her fingertips are close enough to almost graze his face. Shu. There is a flash of light as a figure appears in the room between Shu and Fuyuka. Shu clenches his eyes shut, shutting out the brightness. He hears Fuyuka gasp. Kyosuke. When Shu opens his eyes, he sees yet another person that he wasn't expecting to see and understands his sister's surprise. And... Oh, it's Natsume. Natsume? But even his black... With his black hair and strange clothes, the other person is instantly recognisable as an older Natsume. Kisuke said that he was working with Natsume in the future, but what's he doing here? Well, that's my theory out the fucking window. <laughs> what? The hell? Are you... No, we invented time travel. Now, we must summon our inner goth. <laughs> what is that? You've got an earring for fuck's sake. Man, the older Natsume looks just as surprised to, sh to, to see Shu here. You? His eyes flick downward to Shu's wrist and then the confusion leaves Natsume's face. I see how it is. So it really was you all along. What are you talking about? I'd like to explain, but I'm afraid we've got more pressing issues to deal with right now. Stay behind me, Shu. You mustn't let her touch you. What? Why? The gruesome murders that have been happening, that's what happens when she touches you. Your body will get torn apart. This isn't Fuyuka, it's merely an echo. What does that mean? All in good time, Shu. Natsume, why are the two of you- Fuyuka, listen to me. Which universe did you come from? How did you get here? Going to fail again. I can't do this without him. Fuyuka. If you're not dead, then Shu won't look for you. He won't find the keys. Listen to me, Fuyuka. It's no good. She didn't listen to me earlier either. It's like she doesn't even hear what we say. She doesn't even listen to you? <laughs> I was afraid it would be like this, but I was still hoping. Natsume sighs, his shoulders dropping in a defeated, disappointed arc. I'm going to dispel this echo. Stand back. What do you mean, dispel? Natsume produces a metal cylinder, practically from thin air, and when he presses the buttons on it, a beam of light comes out, forming a curved edge. After a deep inhale, Natsume slashes the light sword at Fuyuka. As soon as the light makes contact with her body, she vanishes like a desert mirage. Natsume pushes another button to retract the beam of light and tucks the sword cylinder away. He takes a deep breath and then lets out a long sigh before glancing over at his younger self, lying on the bed. What a mess. Sorry, Shu. You must be really confused. State the fucking obvious, why don't you? A bit conf- Did you not see what ha- Yes! I'm confused! That's an understatement! I used a faulty memento to get here, so I don't have a lot of time. But I'll try and explain what I can. The Fuyuka that you just saw, as I said, was an echo. Echo is a general term we use in the future to describe things that aren't original. Like clones? That's one application, but it's more like echoes are products of multiverse phenomenon. Multiverse? There are an infinite number of different time streams or universes, you see. Somewhere out there, there's a universe where you decided not to dye your hair blonde. There's a universe where I decided my favourite animal was the giraffe. But your favourite animal is the giraffe. Seriously? Well, that just proves my point. In any case... <laughs> right, the Fuyuka is just an echo of the real thing, but don't you already know that? Nope, and the real thing? So there's even universes where Fuyuka didn't die. That's where these echoes come from. Shu, you shouldn't think of it that way. That's how this whole mess started. Why not? Wouldn't that be the first thing you think about? Shu can't even count how many times he's wished and prayed that Fuyuka hadn't really died. He thought that Natsume, of all people, would understand. How? He's essentially a keeper of time at this point. You see, the universe you're in now is the main one. 
It's the one in which all the others are based. Right, the one I'm in? Are you from a different one? That's right, my universe is just an echo. Then how are you here right now? I invented a time machine that could go across universes, but I realised how dangerous that is. If you're not careful, time can get completely thrown out of whack like it is now. What do you mean? You know how you said that Fuyuka not dying would be the first thing you think about? She nods. The you from my universe thought the same thing. I'm guessing that's not a good thing. He came to this universe after stealing the time machine and tried to save Fuyuka from dying. However, he used a memento that didn't have a strong enough link. So... Fuyuka got thrown into some other universe, as you know. She wants to ask why he's supposed to already know that, but Natsume keeps talking. And we have no idea where, she, where you are. You need to understand that Fuyuka being missing from the main universe made a real mess of things. Haven't you noticed that your childhood memories are all jumbled up? Like the memory of how mum and dad came up with our names? That's not all the time streams. The universes are starting to merge. That's why it's gotten easier for me to travel here. It's not a good thing. Why not? Because eventually, time itself will collapse and everything will be destroyed. Yeah, that's... That's not good. That's an understatement. Don't go stealing my words, Natsume. Suddenly, something starts to beep and rapidly and loudly. Damn it, I'm out of time. Wait, I still have like a gajillion questions. Sorry, I want to explain things to you, but I've got to go. I hadn't wanted for you to find out about everything like this. There is no good way to find out about this. No, why not? Listen, you have to save me. I Save the Natsume from this universe. He's got all the knowledge about my coordinate system technology, so you won't be able to do much of anything while he's incapacitated like this. Wait, coordinate system technology? What does... I've been in contact with him... with myself. I've, we've been doing a lot of things behind the scenes. Natsume, if the future starts to fade, Shu swallows all of the questions he has, difficult though it is to do so. Okay, so I'll save you. You can count on me, Natsume. I always knew I could. Eventually, he is completely gone. Shu sinks to his knees, overwhelmed by everything that's happened. I didn't get to ask him about Fuyuka or what Kisuke's doing. I guess he's pretty busy in that other universe doing stuff. Shu grits his teeth as he rises from the ground and gazes at his older brother, still asleep on the bed. I've got to save Natsume fast before the serial killer acts again. Wait. The gruesome murders that have been happening, that's what happens when she touches you. Shu can't wrap his head around that statement. Well, I guess time exploding or whatever is way more important. I can ask about the serial killer later. But then... What did Fuyuka's Echo want? I'm so confused. Shu shakes his head and takes a deep breath to calm himself. All that's not important right now. I'm no scientist. I just have to focus on what I can do right now. And that means saving Natsume. Wait for me, Natsume. Shu makes a run for the dorms, ignoring all the nurses scolding him on his way out of the building. I hope they don't have cameras in that oh, building. That would fucking confuse anyone. After getting back to the dorms, Shu heads straight for his brother's room. Upon opening the door, however, he sees Yukonori sitting at his desk. Damn, I should have knocked. Shu, did you need something? Yeah, I'm just looking for something. Oh, what did you need? Perhaps I can help you find it. Shu struggles to think of an excuse on the spot. It's just something I lent to my brother a while ago. Don't worry, I can find it on my own. All right, just help yourself. It is my brother. Like, he has no business. Yukinari returns his attention to his fish tank. Okay, time to look around. Almost an entire hour goes by and Shu finds nothing he can use as a memento. You haven't found it yet? Nope. Are you sure you don't want my help? Yeah, don't worry about me. Yukinari shrugs slightly and turns away again. Natsume's room is a lot less cluttered than I thought it'd be. I figured he'd just have receipts and stuff laying around everywhere, but I can't find anything that I can use. Shu sits down on the floor, feeling somewhat defeated. When he does so, he notices the corner of a laptop poking out from underneath Natsume's bed. I guess all I needed was a different perspective? Shu lazily crawls over on his hands and knees and pulls the laptop out. I didn't know Natsume had a laptop. Oh, yeah, I think he got it a few weeks after you all moved in. I see him typing away on it from time to time, mostly at night. Huh? Shu opens the laptop. Is there the shit we need in there? You're just going to open it up and look at it. I'm curious. <laughs> I suppose I can't blame you. Losing interest, Yukinari returns to his fish tank upkeep. After the laptop boots up, Shu is surprised to find out that there's no password. He starts browsing the files on it to see if there's anything of interest. There's not much on here. He finds one porn site. <laughs> While going through his brother's browsing history, which to his credit he spends only 10 minutes looking at, look, that either means he has close to no stamina, 
or there's a clue in there. And I'll make fun of him for this later. <laughs> Aside from a few documents related to poetry and a few saved articles about the Hadron Collider, which he spends almost no time looking at, Natsume's laptop is fairly bare. Yukinari was right, he doesn't use this much. Before shutting off the laptop, he decides to have a look at the contents of the USB thumb drive that's plugged into the side. Well, the thumb drive is literally titled Memento. How much more obvious can you get? Excited to have found something at last, Shu tries to open the drive folder, but a password prompt pops up. Now there's a password. Of course there's a password. Come on, there's nothing on the laptop, but there is something on the thumb duck. If someone randomly takes that for no good reason, you're fucked. Uh, Shu clicks on the hint button, a short phrase comes up. To love is to sin. Oh, I remember. We talked about this. It's from Soseki's novel Kokoro. I could be wrong, but it's worth a try. Shu types in Kokoro onto the password field. To his relief, the file list of the USB drive comes up. The password was correct! That's a shit password! You could Google that! If I Googled that right now, to love is to sin. Okay, to love is to sin. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff about love the sinner, hate the sin. <laughs> and biblical stuff. Alright, maybe it doesn't come up. Maybe that is more sophisticated than I thought. Maybe in Japan it would come up. Unfortunately, I don't know Japanese, so I can't just Google that in Japanese. Man, this is a long episode. <laughs> I just fucking realised the time. Should we stop now? Should we keep going? Ah, oh, you guys want to keep going. We'll see how long we can keep going for. Natsume Suzeki's novel means mean a lot to Natsume. He talks about literature a lot, but I guess you'd have to know him better to understand the way he thinks. Anyway, I'm glad it worked. I'm going to take his laptop back to my room. Go ahead, Natsume's not exactly around to stop you. You aren't going to object? Do I have a reason to? <laughs> Technically, is sorta of my laptop, sorta, of, in a twisted way of looking at things. Shu closes his brother's laptop and carries it to his room. And Shu's head is swimming, stuffed as it is with the new information he's learned and the implications of it all. Overwhelmed, he soon drifts off to sleep. Okay, right, we have to end the episode here, otherwise we're just going to keep going. So we'll see you next episode, and hopefully, you know, it'll keep trudling along like this. This is great. This is really good.